We are going to be spending the month of May um, looking at making disciples. So we started with this vine um, scripture today. And for those of you who know me, you know I like to spend time outside in the garden working on things. And one of the things as a minister in the United Methodist Church is you have to be ready to move at a moment's notice. I'm not moving. Don't panic. Well, at least I don't think I'm moving. Don't panic. I'll panic for you if it happens. So, one of the things that I like to have is a garden. And so when we came here, we opened up a piece of ground and put in a garden. We picked the lowest possible spot in the yard, not on purpose, but it floods every spring. We call it Lake Holman Scannell when it happens, because it's between the Holmans and the Scannells. And it's temporary, but it's hard to grow a garden where there's a flood. So I built some boxes and I filled them up with dirt and now I have my garden out in these boxes. But everything that you add as a minister is something you have to look at to take apart when you leave. Well, one of the things that we planted when we first came here was a grapevine. We put it by the garage. There were these nice trellises on the garage, and we thought, wouldn't a grapevine look nice on a trellis by the garage? That was eight years ago. And so the vine is now really a grapevine. And we get grapes off of it occasionally. We get to use those grapes. But if you've ever had a grapevine, you know what they're like, right? They go crazy. And what you have to do is wherever there are no grapes, you have to cut off the vine. Because if you don't cut off the vine, all the energy that would go to the grapes goes into that long vine that doesn't have anything on it. And so every once in a while, I go out there and I chop off the vines. And occasionally... I get yelled at for chopping off the vines. You've cut off too much. And if you know anything about grapes, you know that the only way you can cut off too much is if you cut it off at the ground. And there's a good chance it's going to come back even if you do that. But one of the other things that we did was we put in raspberry plants. And for those of you with raspberry plants, you know Raspberries are like weeds. They spread. And so every year I have to go and I have to keep the raspberries in an area. And this year it was particularly cold. And so as I looked at the raspberries yesterday, I thought I should really prune these back. If you've had raspberries, you know the other thing about raspberries is they hurt. It hurts a lot to go in to a group of raspberries and take out the dead branches. So, of course, I left them there. But they still need to be taken out. So, sometime in the next two weeks, I'm going to have to venture into that space. It's a small, fenced-in area that has raspberry plants in it. Some of them are growing and have leaves, and they're beautiful. Some of them are brown and shriveled and dead. And I have to dig in there and I have to get them out. Well, we don't care about your plants and your garden, Pastor. Why are you telling us this story? Because I'm telling you this because it takes effort in a garden to get fruit. 
No matter what that fruit is, whether it be fruits or vegetables, if you don't put in the effort, you're not going to get the reward at the end. If you want something simple and easy, put radishes in the ground. They grow quickly, doesn't take a whole lot of work, and within four weeks, you can have radishes. But it's pretty hard to make a meal out of radishes. We have to put work in. So the raspberries have been a process. They've taken years. The grapes have been a process. It's taken years. We have asparagus that comes up every year. We have strawberries that come up every year. But yet, all of that takes effort and work. Being a disciple for God takes effort and work. And making disciples is hard. It takes hard work to make disciples for God. So the story today talks about Jesus being the vine. And God is the person who takes care of and prunes the vineyard. And Jesus says, if you do not bear fruit, you will be pruned. And it goes beyond that. It even goes to the point of saying that you will not only be pruned, but what is pruned will be burned up in the fire. Wait a minute, Pastor. I thought you said that grapevines grow like crazy. They do. And there's a lot of pruning that goes on. Kind of the way our lives are. If you've been alive for more than, oh, I don't know, eight or ten years, you know how much different your life is than it was when you first remembered your life. Even the changes that have occurred in your life in the last two years have been crazy. We have lived through this pandemic where nothing has remained the same. Things have changed. There are certain things that we are probably going to take forward with us forever. Certain things that we'll be happy to leave behind. But the reality is it's been work to go through these different changes. And so as we change as people, I really believe that is God working on us to get us into the shape that we're supposed to be. Have you ever driven past someplace that has a vineyard on it? And you look out and you see really how little, little there is to the grapevine. It's marvelous to see. And it's amazing to watch them as they prune the grapes. The person who does it does it very quickly. They have an eye for it. They know exactly what they're looking for and exactly where to cut. And they will go through and they will quickly prune. If you've ever watched anybody who trims trees, especially fruit trees, it's amazing to watch them work. They don't even think about it. They just tear into a fruit tree. As a child growing up in Michigan, there were places where there were apple orchards and cherry orchards. And they would go in and they would trim trees for maximum fruit production. And there would be piles and piles of branches that they would leave. The same for those who prune grapes. Miles and miles of grapevines clipped off, shaping 
the tree and the vine so that it produces the maximum amount of fruit. When I sow seeds in the garden, I always put too many seeds in. And then when they grow up, there is a moment where you have to decide which plants stay and which plants get pulled. Because if you leave them all in there, whatever is growing will be stunted. Whether it be carrots or beets or radishes, whether it be tomatoes or peas or beans, you have to care for it. You have to make sure and take care of it. As disciples for Christ, we too have to think like God thinks. Somebody who shapes and prunes for the maximum amount of fruit. So as you are going forward to make disciples, I want to say to you, remember, you're not the master gardener. And second, it's going to be hard work. And the work is going to be in telling the story. I've been saying this for the last few weeks, but I really want to emphasize it today. Your story is the story of God. You may think, well, my story is boring. Yes, it's all right. Stories are boring, but there are moments in your life where excitement occurs. And it's in those moments that we usually witness to other people about God. We don't necessarily say we're witnessing for God in those moments, but people see how we react. They see what it is that we do. They see what it is that we're made of. They see the work of the master gardener who has pruned us to be the people that we are, who has shaped us to bear the most fruit. God continues to work in each of our lives. And that's the hardest thing. Just when you think you've got everything correct, God reminds us, you're not done yet. And all of a sudden you hear that sound in the back of your mind, those clippers coming towards you to prune you to make you better, to make you more efficient, to make you a better disciple for God. As we go forth in the month of May about making disciples, we have to start at home. We have to start with ourselves. We have to make ourselves better disciples. So there are gonna be moments, Jesus says, I am the vine, And God is the vine keeper. Jesus is saying that God prunes Jesus to bear more fruit. No one is immune to this being pruned. We all need to be shaped and formed the way God would have us to be. And sometimes we have to say goodbye to those things that God is pruning away. We pile them up in a pile and they dry out. And today, not as many people burn them. We compost them. We recycle them. But there are still people who burn as well. That pile of sticks, that pile of vines that is dried out. And is burned. You take those ashes and you put it back on the plants to provide them nutrients. You see, everything in our life happens for a reason.
And I think God uses everything that happens in our lives to make us better disciples. So be prepared as you move forward to be doing the extra work to be fruitful, to make disciples, and to be the best disciple that you can be. And later, when the fruit comes on and the grapes are hanging from the vine or the kids are eating the raspberries off the bushes or the strawberries out of the garden, you can smile and be happy and know that it was worth the work to bring the joy and to bear much fruit. Will you pray with me? God of grace and mercy, thank you. for pruning us to be the best disciples that we can be. Lord, give us patience and endurance and strength to bear fruit for you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the United Methodist Church, Communion is available for everyone. Doesn't matter age. It doesn't matter income. It doesn't matter color of skin. All are welcome at God's table. Today we are coming to celebrate communion. God's gift of life made possible through us through his death for the forgiveness of our sins, we come to celebrate that gift. On the night he was betrayed, Christ took a cup. He lifted it up, gave thanks to God, and passed it to his disciples. And he said, take, drink, this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, remember me. He also lifted the loaf. He broke that loaf and passed it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, remember me. We come today to remember a broken Christ. We come to celebrate the blood that frees us from sin. We come to communion to remember Christ and the forgiveness made possible through his love and sacrifice for us. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, I ask your presence here on these, your people, that they would know your forgiveness. And on these elements, Lord, that this cup and this bread would be for us, the blood and body of Christ, broken and shed so that we may know true forgiveness of sins through the power of your Holy Spirit and the sacrifice of your Son. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I invite you to open the cup and to remove the wafer, the body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. Will you pray with me? Lord, we give thanks for your grace that frees us from sin. Lord, lead us in a way that is pleasing to you and thank you for the forgiveness that is found in you through the power of the Holy Spirit and through communion. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen.
Go forth from this place and be God's disciple, fruitful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.